Hey there, students. Welcome. The classroom is so empty without you all, but I'm so glad that we're able to still use Canvas and be able to communicate on there and have the great discussions. So I am super pleased with how things have been going so far. Let's keep it up. Give me an air high five. So there's going to be two videos where I talk about the Susan B. Anthony speech. In this first one, I'm just going to read the script word for word as she said it. And then the next one, I'm going to talk about what she meant because the speech was given in 1872 or 1873. So, you know, like 150 years ago. Um, so she uses a lot of big words, but she also speaks in ways that we're not, we don't really speak in those same ways anymore. So I want to break, I want to have another video where I, I break it down. Um, and not like the break it down kind of dance that you've seen me do, but just like talk about the gist. Um, so let's get to it. Famous speeches, Susan B. Anthony's Women's Right to the Suffrage. And editors note, this was not part of what she said. This is just the person who put the script together giving background on it. The year before making this speech, Susan B. Anthony uh, voted illegally. She voted in the 1872 election between Ulysses S. Grant and Horace Greeley. Anthony was fined $100, which would be considered nearly $2,000 today. Instead of paying up, Anthony made speech after speech fighting for women's rights. Anthony died in 2006. She was sadly unable to see her goal realized. Women were finally given the right to suffrage in 1920. She also never paid her $100 fine. So that's just background knowledge for us. So right here when I start with friends, this is the exact speech that Susan B. Anthony gave. So you can, instead of imagining my voice, you can imagine the voice of a woman who lived 150 years ago. That should be fun. Friends and fellow citizens, I stand before you tonight accused of the supposed crime of having voted in the last presidential election without having a lawful right to vote. It shall be my work this evening to prove to you that by voting I committed no crime. I simply exercised my citizens' rights. These are rights guaranteed to me and all United States citizens by the National Constitution. No state has any power to deny these rights. The preamble of the federal constitution says, We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure peace and quiet at home, provide a way for our country to defend itself, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our future, do establish this constitution for the United States of America. It was we, the people, who formed the union. It was not we, the white male citizens. It was not we, the male citizen. It was not even we, the male citizens, who did this. It was we, the whole people, who formed the union. And we formed this union not just to give the blessings of liberty to others, but to secure them for ourselves. We did not form it just for half of ourselves or half of our posterity. We formed it for all our nation's future citizens. We formed it for men, for women as well as men. It is insulting to women to talk to them of their enjoyment of the blessings of liberty while they are denied the vote. The vote is the only way to gain these blessings provided by this democratic republican government. A state may not make a law that takes away the rights of one half of the people. It is like passing an unjust bill of attainder. It is like convicting a whole group of people for some crime and punishing them without a trial. It is a law that makes an act a crime only after the act has been committed. Doing this goes against the highest law of the land, of our land. In this way, the blessings of liberty are forever kept from women. To women, this government has no fair powers that come from the consent of the citizens. To women, this government is not a democracy. It is not a republic. It is an immoral government. It is run by a few privileged men. It is the most hateful aristocracy ever established on the face of the earth. It is a government of wealth, where the rich rule over the poor. We might be able to live under a government where the educated rule the uneducated. We might endure... One where the white man rules over the black man, but this is a government based only on whether a person is a man or a woman. It makes fathers, brothers, husbands, and sons the rulers over mothers, sisters, wives, and daughters. It allows all men to act as kings, ruling over all women. It brings disagreement, disharmony, and anger into the home, into every home of the nation. In their dictionaries, Webster, Worcester, and Bouvier all give the same definition of the word citizen. They say a citizen is a person in the United States. They say a citizen has the right to vote and hold office. The only question left to be settled now is, are women people? 
I hardly believe any of our opponents will have the nerve to say they are not. Being people, then, women are citizens. No state has a right to make any new law or to keep any old law that shall take away their rights or protections. Therefore, every discrimination against women in, their, in the constitutions and laws of the several states is today without power, precisely as is every such law against black Americans. Thanks for watching.